السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Peace be upon you, dear brothers and sisters Welcome to our program The Quran Back to Basics Tonight, inshallah, I'm going to talk about the most important the third most important pillar of Islam Zakat, inshallah. Uh, but before I start with Zakat, I would like to recite from Surah Al Mu'minun. Uh, the chapter has a verse about this beautiful pillar. So let me put the verses on the screen. And then after the recitation, inshallah, we can start our topic. Let me put the verses. <clears throat> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون والذين هم للزكاة والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم راعون والذين هم على صلواتهم أولئك هم الوارثون الذين يرثون الفردوس هم فيها خالدون صدق الله سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين 
iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdina as-siratal al-mustaqim siratal alladhina an'amta 'alayhim ghayri al-maghdubi 'alayhim waladdallin amin peace be upon all of you again dear brothers and sisters as i mentioned at the beginning our topic is the third pillar of islam zakat and to do tonight's inshallah discussion i am going to try to cover the meaning of zakat the status of zakat in islam and the importance of zakat and the payment of zakat inshallah uh but first i would like to start with the quranic verses related to this topic zakat inshallah and also how important this subject is in the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when we look at the quran we find that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned zakat and salah the second most important pillar of islam is salah after shahada and the third one is zakat the reason i say this when we look at the quran we find 82 times allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has associated zakat with salah and i will share some of them with you inshallah in the quran so that shows the importance of the third pillar zakat and as we all know faith is not merely a matter of words so we must believe in the reality of existence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but in the meantime we have to turn this faith into action what is that basically following the teachings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you have faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you should follow or you must follow the teachings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do's and don'ts and one of them is zakat and the verses that i recited i'm sure you paid attention the the part of the meaning and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was telling that the believers must eventually win through he said qad aflaha al mu'minun and then the next one is alladhina hum fi salatihim khashi'un which we cover this one in the uh, the second pillar of islam the salah it means those who humble themselves in their prayers and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said walladhina hum 'ani laghwi mu'ridun he said that who avoid vain talk and then the next verse he said walladhina hum li zakati fa'ilun and who are active in giving zakat one after another allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the attributes of those who will win or who will succeed and one of them are the ones who are active in giving zakat and then the famous verse is uh, from surah at-tawbah this verse is from chapter 9 this surah at-tawbah is 9 and then the verse number is 60 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in a long verse by saying innam as-sadaqatu lil fuqara'i wal masakin wal 'amilin 'alayha wal mu'allafati qulubuhum wa fi ar-riqab wal gharimin wa fi sabili llah wa ibn sabil fariqatan min allah wallahu 'alimun hakim so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the groups of people eight eligible groups in this verse whom you may pay the zakat and then towards the end he said fariqatan min allah so this is an obligation imposed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when he was telling this group of people he said zakat expenditures are only for the poor this is the first one and for the needy and for those employed to collect zakat and for bringing hearts together for islam and for freeing captives or slaves and for those in debts and for the cause of allah and for the stranded traveler and these are the eight eligible groups of people and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said an obligation imposed by allah and then at the end he said wallahu alimun hakim allah is knowing and wise now the zakat before i you know share the meaning and then how we pay and how much we pay 
Also, I would like to get your attention in the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, when we look at the Seer of Nabi or, 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 or the authentic Hadith, these things of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, out of them we can deduce this, that the Sunnah expressly considers zakah not only as one of the five pillars of the superstructure of Islam, but also a proof of faith. As I mentioned, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to prove your faith, you just turn that faith into action. And then also the zakat is an expression of gratitude. How do you show your gratitude? Not only by saying Alhamdulillah and saying all praise and thanks be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also sharing that wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided for you. And that could be in two ways, either through zakat or sadaqah. And then I will talk about the difference between these two, inshallah. And sadaqah, zakat, and then there are types of zakats, and then the sadaqah, I'll try to cover them, inshallah, tonight. So that's what the zakat, we show uh, or express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the other uh, thing is the elimination of miserliness. You know, it's, it's sometimes hard to give after you work hard. Sharing is sometimes difficult, but we have to exert ourselves until it becomes natural. It becomes our second nature. Even at some point you, you know, kind of like get so happy when you give away, help others, because this is the best way to get, you know, to attain happiness through making others happy. And then also the zakat is a test of the degree of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, whenever we do something, we just, we just do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you do this, inshallah, you will attain the success not only here, but also hereafter. That's why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so keen on zakat. And before I move on into, before I move into the definition of zakat, also I would like to uh, inform ourselves that Allah is the absolute owner of the wealth. We need to know this brothers and sisters. Even, that, even though we might have certain amount of wealth under our names or under our titles, but that doesn't mean we are the absolute owner of that wealth. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Imran, وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ So that means to Allah belongs to the dominion of the heavens and the earth. You might think that yours, it is yours temporarily, but at the end of the day, everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the absolute owner of the wealth, whatever exists in the heavens and also in the earth. So, and, and then also he said in Surah Al-Hadith, آمنوا بالله ورسوله وأنفقوا مما جعلكم مستخلفين فيه and spend of what, whereof he has made you trustees. First, of course, a belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, and then anfiqu, that means spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has made you trustees. Again, you are, you might be the temporary uh, owner. Mustakhlafin, it's, it comes from the same root word, khalifa. You know, I think we talked about this in different uh, occasions. Uh, it could be more than one meaning. One of them is was gerent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or sometimes they said trustee or, or they said caretaker that this is, this doesn't belong to you, you know, like eternally, permanently. So you're just caretaker, you need to maintain. And then another meaning of Khalifa means like the one progeny, one group of people follows the other. So making sure that you take care of it and you are a caretaker. And then this is an amana, this is a trust that you can pass for the future generation, the way you receive from your uh, past. So 
uh, there are quite few uh, meanings of khilafa or khalifa. Uh, so uh, there's also, you know, caliph, khilafa, it's, it's all derived from the same root word. But uh, again, back to the topic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, you know, these wealth are the, the absolute owners of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So always remember that. And another important thing about um, before we get into the meaning of zakat is that Islam esteems wealth and then also wealthy as long as it is earned in a permissible way or in a moral way. So, and when we talk about, of course, the wealth, we have to remember that universal brotherhood and justice. And then we have to remember that equitable distribution of income is must. And these are really important things. And, and zakat establishes some of these uh, you know, conditions. Now, let's start with the meaning of zakat. And zakat, the word meaning of zakat is, uh, the first meaning is uh, purification. And the sec second meaning is growth. And the purification of what? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in two beautiful small chapters in the last part of uh, Quran, the 30th uh, part. First in Surah Al-A'la, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qad aflaha man tazakka. And he said, he has certainly succeeded who purifies himself or herself. Qad aflaha man tazakka. And in a similar version, he said also, Qad aflaha man zakkaha. This is in Surah Al-Shams. It's about the same length, a beautiful surah. This time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he has succeeded who purifies it. Now there's purification in this beautiful word, zakat. So purification of what? The first thing is purification of the soul. And the second thing is the purification of the wealth. How do you purify the soul? Of course, as I mentioned, you know, there are some illness and we've been talking on Thursday evenings about purification of the soul from the illnesses and then fill, emptying heart and then filling with the beautiful uh, characters and attributes. So you are going to purify your soul from miserliness, stinginess, by giving, by practicing. That's the first thing, purification of the heart, your soul. And then the second is you are purifying your wealth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, give. And by giving, you are going to purify your wealth, inshallah. And the second dimension I mentioned, uh, mentioned that zakat is also growth. And again, growing in two ways. The first thing is spiritual. And the second thing is your wealth grows. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here, but So you will certainly succeed. Um, and, you know, it'll grow, it'll succeed by giving zakat. And the growth is spiritual growth. Why? Because you are obeying the farida, the, the obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you obey and follow the footsteps of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then inshallah, you will get closer to Allah, God Almighty, and you will spiritually grow. And then your wealth will grow because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised in so many times, you know, if you give, I will give you more. If you show gratitude, I will give you more. There are ways that if you want your, you know, wealth to increase, just follow the teachings of Al-Quran al Kari. So, and this is one of the ways to increase your wealth. And Allah has promised me, if you give, and I will give you more. Now, that's, that's what zakat is. And in fiqh term, terminology, in, in fiqh jurisprudence, we hear zakat and sadaqah. So zakat is the mandatory, uh, obligated uh, you know, uh, practice and the sadaqah is voluntary. But sometimes they are used interchangeably. Here in this verse, you see, in namaz sadaqah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says sadaqah, but we are talking about zakat. So that's why uh, our scholars came up with um, interchangeable terms. I'm going to mention them. The first one is, when we say zakat, we have zakatul mal 
and zakatul fitr. And then sometimes instead of using zakatul mal, and uh, you know you see in the fiqh books they used sadaqa mafruta, so mandatory sadaqa for zakatul mal zakat. And then when it comes to the next one, zakat al fitr, sometimes you see sadaqa al fitr. You know they are used interchangeably, but at the end of the day. It meant the same thing, zakatul mal or sadaqa mafruda, and the other one is zakatul fitr or sadaqa fitr. And then the regular sadaqa, the voluntary sadaqa is also called sadaqa tatawwa. So that means you're voluntarily giving. Now, when it comes to zakat, uh, first, of course, you have to have your necessities. That means when you reach the after you cover your necessities, if, after you support yourself and your family members, and, and, then you and then you subtract your debt, and the wealth, the rest, if it, if it exceeds uh, the, the, the term called nisab, nisab is approximately $4,000 in today's US dollars. So if you have more than four thousand dollars in today's, uh, you know, uh, dollars. Then that means you exceed the threshold. You exceed the nisab. Then you are obligated to give zakat after a year over that wealth. So basic definition of zakat is two point five percent of your wealth annually directly goes into these eight group, eight eligible groups of people. So that's what zakat is. First, you make sure that you cover yourself and then whatever the wealth, if it's exceeding $4,000 and plus you need to make sure that you exceed, uh, you subtract your debt. Um, and then if you see it, it's exceeding the NISA, which is approximately $4,000, then out of that amount annually, 2.5%, you will calculate and give any of these eight eligible groups. That's what the basic definition of zakat. So now these are some of the terms that I wanted to share with you. And now importance of the zakat. Uh, as I said, after shahada, the salah, and then the zakat uh, comes, and we see it so many times, uh, I said 82 times that Quran mentions uh, the salah and the zakat together. One of them is right here from Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ So, and be steadfast in the prayers and give zakat. And if, again, if you look at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers, and you see that the same thing over there also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the salah and the zakat together. It is really important. And then our scholars discussed about the, the major benefits of zakat that, you know, to two major benefits. The first one is it keeps us away from sin and saves us from the moral illnesses. And because the moral illnesses arises from due to greed or stinginess or miserliness. And when we give, we become uh, generous and we exert ourselves. So that's why the zakat is really important. And then they talked about three groups of people, three classes of people when it comes to zakat. And then they said, the first one is fulfillers. And then the second group of people are um, defaulters. And then the third group of people are, they said, deniers. Now the fulfillers, it's obvious that they believe in zakat that it, which is farida from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligatory. And then they fulfill. They, you know, mostly we do it in the month of Ramadan because it's easy to follow, uh, you know, Ramadan to Ramadan since it's, it's, it's also lunar calendar when we calculate our zakat. So, you know, Ramadan to Ramadan. And then also we believe that in, in anything that you do in the month of Ramadan is multiplied uh, in reward by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So those are the first group, fulfillers. And they believe in and then also fulfill and they pay the zakat. And then the second group of people, they call defaulters. So that means they believe that the zakat is a faridah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they are negligent. They don't pay. These people are sinners and they don't. The, the, the best way to fix this is, you know, as soon as possible to calculate and pay the missing zakats and then also do repentance for the late and ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the last two and especially the last one, the deniers. If someone says that, and it says that I don't believe that the zakat is far, you know, if they try to explain, oh, why are you living in this time and that, that's, you know, oh, I'm paying tax. And no, that tax and zakat is totally different thing. So the deniers are, are may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us falling into these group of people, uh, are the ones who reject zakat as a faridah and then also do not pay. So, and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described uh, Al Mushrikun, uh, Surah Fussilat, and chapter uh, 41, and the verses 6 and 7, and the end of 6 starts, and, and then also all the way to the end of uh, beginning and end of 7, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, lil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Woe to those who join gods with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mushrik means uh, the polytheists. Allah is saying, Way means woe to those. And now Allah describes, la zakata wahum bil -akhiratuhum kafirun. So uh, who pay not zakat and who even deny the hereafter. They don't stop there. They, you know, don't pay the zakat. And then also they deny the, the, the hereafter, the akhirah. If they believed in akhirah, if they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly, they would pay the zakat. But the, 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 this is the attribute of um, mushrik, the polytheist. So that is the admonishment uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who reject zakat or, or doesn't uh, pay the zakat. Uh, next time, inshallah, we're going to get into more technical and detailed part of zakat. Uh, if you have any question, inshallah, today or, or in, in, in the future, so please feel free to ask. Uh, our time is perfect up. Uh, I'm going to stop here for today. Now I'm going to call the event, and after the event and the prayer, I'll come back, and there are a few dua requests. Um, we'll pray for our brothers and sisters, those who are sick and then passed away, and then uh, finish for tonight, inshallah. Okay, let me call the event, and then we'll pray. <clears throat> Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Shahadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Shahadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Shahadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة 
اللهم اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاه قد قامت الصلاه الله اكبر الله اكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر حنك اللهم وحمدك تبارك اسمك لا نشرك ولا نعبد إلا إياك الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إنما الصدقات للفقراء والمساكين والعاملين عليها والمؤلفة قلوبهم والمؤلفة قلوبهم وفي الرقاب والغارمين وفي سبيل الله وابن السبيل فريضة من الله والله عليم حكيم ومنهم الذين يؤذون النبي ويقولون هو أذن قل أذن خير لكم يؤمن بالله ويؤمن للمؤمنين ورحمة 
ويؤمن للمؤمنين ورحمة للذين آمنوا منكم والذين يؤذون رسول الله لهم عذاب أليم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إذن الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرحمهم الله إن الله عزيز حكيم وعد الله المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها ومساكن طيبة في جنات عد ورضوان من الله أكبر ذلك هو الفوز العظيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر وتحية لكل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ومدى الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام أبارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم سبحان الله 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 الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير before i start with the dua i would like to mention two names one of them is uh, last year, Brother Mir Muhyiddin Farooq Ali Khan uh, passed away. Uh, today is the anniversary, so the, the one year after, inshallah, we are going to pray uh, for our beloved brother and then also for those who passed away before us. And then also there's a dua request for our little brother, Abdul Rahman, is having uh, surgery, uh, dental surgery. Please keep him also in your prayers. So let us pray, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam, wa la rasulina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma laka alhamdu kulluh. Allahumma absud alayna min barakatika wa rahmatika wa fadlika wa rizqik. Allahumma inana nasaluka na'imma al-mukima alladhi la yahulu wa la yazul. Allahumma habib ilayna al-imana wa zayinhu fi qulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wa al-fusuqa wa al-asyan wa ja'alna min al-rashidin. اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك وطاعتك ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا أتمن لنا نورنا واغفر لنا إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات 
والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب التعاوات آمين والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تآخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Accept our prayers, accept our du'as, inshallah, dear brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, I'm looking at the chat box if there's any question other than salams and jazakumullah khair wa iyaakum. Um, and uh, there is one question. Uh, the question is, is it for real that the money is really not going to decrease? Mana min sadaqah. That's a hadith, actually. Uh, the, the money is really not going to decrease or is it meant as that it is going to a good cause that's why you don't consider it's decreased it's, it's a good question actually you may take it in both ways the first thing is you know if you read a, you know the portion from surah al-baqarah i would really strongly recommend towards the end of uh, the the su- surah you know, it's, it's almost like two pages. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the importance of sadaqah, giving away. I think that's the best portion in order to understand what sadaqah is, how, wh- how, why it's so important, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the wealth. I mean, it's in the Quran, it's in the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the, the, the one that you put it, actually, it's, it's a hadith the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whenever you give away, your, your wealth doesn't increase. Actually, the more you give, the more your wealth increase. So you can take it uh, both ways. And I really believe in that, you know, you might think that when you give, your wealth is decreasing, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless your wealth. And you, will, you won't understand, you know, how the money or the wealth is increasing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the simile of, you know, the grain. So inshallah, next time I'm going to put uh, those verses uh, because we, we're going to continue with zakat inshallah that part is beautiful so Allah is promising and, and then his messenger Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also promising that you know by giving away you are 
doing two things. First, you are purifying your wealth, and then you are gaining the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is going to increase your wealth. And you can also take this in two meaning. The first one is he's going to increase your wealth here in this world, but also you are spending for hereafter. So as they say, whatever you give, that is yours. So inshallah, through giving, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase our wealth. And, and, and I strongly believe in that, and I have witnessed in so many ways. And if you are in need of wealth I mean, or, or help, please help others. As we always say that if you want your dua to be accepted and pray for others, and inshallah Allah will accept. And you can apply the same concept here. If you want your wealth to increase, just give for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you will see inshallah that your wealth is purified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then also you will see the increasement. And next time, inshallah, if I forget, please remind me in the chat box, I'm gonna put those verses on the screen. And then remember that the shaitan, you know, is, is, is the enemy. And then in that part, actually, it says, as, you know, the shaitan is, is trying to put fear in your heart that you will be poor if you give. But the opposite, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you give, actually, you will gain more. So which way you are going to take? You're going to follow the, the path or the, the trick of shaitan or the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You all know the answer. So inshallah, we'll uh, discuss more about zakat next time. So... Okay, and then let me see. I will. Will you cover the type of assets to pay the zakat? Yes, inshallah. Next, next time, uh, we'll try to cover. Uh, you know, we have so many contemporary issues. I'll do my best to cover. Uh, you know, some people will ask, like, okay, you know, I have mortgage payments, and you know, should I consider it as that? And then if I, you know, subtract, then nothing left. So or some people might ask that, you know, I have 401k or, or bond and this and that. I'll do my best. I know, I know those, most of them are contemporary issues and then there are different opinions. We'll try to cover those, hopefully, uh, next uh, Monday. But tomorrow, Brother Hassan is going to be with us. Uh, he will be my guest. And then Thursday, we'll continue with our uh, spiritual night, inshallah. Uh, the purification of the soul, to uh, get to nafs. So thank you so much for joining us. Have a great night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and, and increase your you, not only by monetary wise or the wealth wise, but also spiritually. And then also by knowledge, because we ask, Rabbi zidni ilma wa fahma. Don't forget about that. So uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase you in many ways by knowledge by wealth and the most important of all spiritually that you get closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh see you tomorrow at 8 30 p.m